everybody, this is Mrs. Arbucci, fourth grade at Paradise Canyon. Thank you for watching. Um, here in this video, I'm going to show you how to solve multiplication problems using the partial products strategy. So this strategy can be used to solve multiplication problems that are larger than the simple basic multiplication facts that students should have memorized in fourth grade. Um, this strategy is just a simpler way of recording the process of rectangle partitioning. So if you haven't checked out the video that I made about partitioning a rectangle um, in solving multiplication problems, I suggest you do that because that will give you further clarification um, on this strategy. So let's say we are going to start out with a problem that is a four digit by one digit multiplication problem. So let's start with three times 2,156. And we are solving for the product. Let's just say we're solving for x. So we are going to write it the same way that you probably learned. Um, so I'm going to stack these two factors, 2,156 I'm writing at the top. It's just simpler to do the larger numbers at the top. I'm going to put times 3 on the bottom and the line, which is actually the equal sign. So what you know about solving these types of problems using the standard algorithm, I'd like you to try to put that aside because this is, uh, this is very different. But if you listen to what we're doing and watch what we're doing, it, it truly makes a lot of sense. And it really gets the students understanding the math behind solving these types of problems. So our top number is 2,156. There are four digits within that number. And we are going to find all four of the products of each of the values of those digits. I'm going to start with the largest digit, um, and it, that's the 2 because it's in the thousands place. So if you have two thousands, it's 2,000. And we're going to multiply that by the bottom factor, which is 3. So I'm going to write that on the side because I think that'll help you keep track of what we're doing. I'm going to put it in parentheses. The first product we're solving for is 2,000 times 3. 2,000 times 3 is 6,000. Then I'm going to go to the next largest digit, and that's the 1 because it's in the hundreds place. If you have only 100, that equals 100. So I'm going to write that in parentheses, 100. And again, I'm multiplying by the 3, the factor on the bottom. 100 times 3 is 300. And I'm going to line that up with the 6,000. So the 3 in the hundreds place needs to go just below the 0 that's in the hundreds place in the number 6,000. The 0 in the tens place of the 300 needs to go directly underneath the 0 in the tens place in the number 6,000. And finally, the 0 that's in the ones place in the number 300 needs to go directly underneath the 0 in the ones place in the number 6,000. Okay, moving on. I'm going to go to the next largest number, which is the 5, because it's in the tens place. If you have 5 tens, you have 50. I'm going to write my 50 here, and I'm going to multiply that by the 3, which is the bottom factor. 50 times 3 is, here, let me fix that. Looks a little bit more like a 3 now. Um, 50 times 3 is 150. And again, I'm going to make sure to line up each of those digits in the correct place. If you don't do that, when you go to add at the end, you're going to get the wrong answer. So you need to make sure that you're writing each um, digit in the correct place value. And lastly, I'm going to go to the 6. The 6 is the smallest one because it's in the ones place. 6 ones is 6. Multiplying that by 3 as well, 6 times 3 is 18. Now I write my line. So now I have four products, and each of those four products is a partial product of the whole product, if that makes any sense. So now I'm going to take 6,300, 150, and 18. I'm going to add them all together. When I add them all together, I'm going to get 
6,468. So that 6,468 is the product of 3 times 2,156, and that is x. So I just wanted to add one more thing before moving on to another problem using this same strategy. Um, the order of your partial products is not important, although it's important that no partial products be omitted. By that I mean, for me, it's easier for me to keep track um, starting with the largest digit. In this case, it was the two because it's in the thousands place. If you'd rather start with the six, you can do that and move over to the left. Um, as long as you are using the values of each of those digits when multiplying um, and you have all of them included, you will get the same answer. So again, the order of the partial products is not important, but it is very important that none of them be omitted. Okay, so we are gonna continue with partial products um, in solving multiplication problems. This time I'm going to do a two digit by two digit multiplication problem. And that's gonna be 17 times 34. And we're gonna solve for the unknown. I'm gonna write the 34 at the top times 17. Looks like we're gonna do the standard algorithm, but we're not, so please put your knowledge of that to the side for now. So I like to start with the three in 34. So the factor up on top on the left, the digit in the left hand side. The three and 34 is in the tens place. So the value of that three is actually 30. I'm gonna multiply that three by this one. But the one in 17 is also in the tens place. So if you have one 10, the value of the one in 17 is 10. Multiply 30 times 10 and you get 300. Now I'm going to move on over to the 4 in 34. Then I'm going to multiply that 4 times the 1 in 17. So the 4 in 34 is in the ones place, so 4 ones is simply 4. Again, remember that the 1 in 17 is in the tens place, so 1 10 is 10. 4 times 10 is 40. Remember to line up each digit in the correct, correct place value position. So now I'm going to move on to the 3 in 34. I'm done with this 1, so I can actually cross it out if you'd like. Now I'm going to go back up to the 34, like I said, and I'm going to look at the 3. Now I'm going to multiply it by the 7 in 17. So we already discussed this, the reason that the 3 and 34 is not just 3, it's in the tens place. So 3 tens is 30. And we're multiplying it by the 7 in the number 17, which is in the ones place. So that's simply 7. 30 times 7 is 210. And remember to line them up correctly. Now I'm going to move over to the 4 in 34 and multiply that by the 7 in 17. Both of those numbers in the, are in the ones place, so that would be 4 times 7, giving us 28. I write my line underneath, plus sign. I add all four of these partial products together to get my final product of 578, and that is what x equals. Okay, parents, I just wanted to add one more thing because two by two multiplication using the partial product strategy can be a little bit confusing. So I just wanted to add um, a few more things to try to clarify any questions that you might have. So for me, the order that I'm finding the partial products this, the order that I just showed you is what's easiest for me. But like I said before, the order of the partial products is not important. You just need to make sure that you have all of them and you haven't omitted any. So in the problem that I just did, the order that I multiplied and found the partial products was like this. 
the 3 times the 1, which is actually 30 times 10, and then the 4 times the 1, which is 4 times 10. Then I went to the 3 and multiplied it by the 7. Then I went to the 4 and multiplied it by 7. So that's the order in which I usually do it, and that's easiest for me. But you or your student might think that another order is easier, and it makes more sense, and that's totally fine. So let's see how I can do this. I'm going to erase those blue lines, and I'm going to use green this time. So you or your student might think that it's easier to maybe do, let's see, 3 times 1, which would give you 30 times 10. And instead of moving over to the 4, you stick with the 3, and you do 3 times 7, which is actually 30 times 7. Then you would move over to the 4, 4 times the 1, which is actually 4 times 10, and then 4 times the 7 to end on. So even though it's in a different order than what I did, when you add all of those partial products together, you're going to get the same exact product in the end. Hope that makes sense and good luck. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.